Hello, everyone. This is Lynn Hunsaker. I'm glad to see you today talking about internal partnering. This is a vital skill to build so that you can get things done, especially with remote work, the realities today. And this applies not only to your uh, department colleagues, but also to other departments that you interface with. And you can apply it externally as well to other uh, agencies and groups that you uh, rely upon, as well as external customers themselves. But we're focusing today on internal partnering because, uh, you know, it's extra hard with the uh, remote situation that we have, and it's really a vital need. If you've been following my um, series to date, I've been talking about trust and ease of work and ease of business. And these partnering modes that we're going to be talking about today go hand in hand with all the things we've been uh, discussing. I really welcome you to take a look at the past episodes uh, as well to get to a greater foundation. Uh, I want to welcome everyone and uh, ask you to specify where you're located today. It's always really fun to see people around the world tuning in. And also, I'd like for you to take a look at the um, partnering modes we have here. There's three partnering modes and nine partnering levels. And we'll discuss how do you toggle between them for the right situation at the right time with the right people to get the most that you can out of the uh, opportunities that you have to yield great value for customer success, customer experience, marketing operations, brand management, um, customer service, and employee experience. Hello, Dinesh. Always good to see you there in San Jose. Uh, so uh, one of the questions I'd like to, for you to answer is, what do you think is the default mode for people in these roles that I've just mentioned? success, service, experience, uh, brand management, marketing ops, employee experience, employee engagement, loyalty, and, and those types of jobs. And, uh, you know, why? why? What is the most common um, partnering level you think people are in and why? And uh, as you can see here, there's three partnering modes, starting with I will tell you, which we will call P1. And the second partnering mode is I will guide you, we'll call that P2. The third partnering mode is let's create together, we'll call that P3. Within each of these, across them, there are nine different levels to toggle through. And let's go ahead and take a look at those. Glad to see you, Katana, in Lithuania. That's really exciting. Uh, welcome, Boston. Welcome, San Jose. Uh, so yes, if you would like to comment about uh, what is the most common um, partnering level that, that people are in today and why, that would be an interesting thing for us to take a look at in a moment. So let's, t let's delve into I will tell you. I will tell you is where you provide deliverables to people within the organization. And the, those recipients are rather uh, passive. So the first partnering level is administrator. You're managing tasks, budgets, schedules, res resources. Uh, part of our jobs are um, taken up with that type of uh, work. And then the second partnering level is implementer. You're executing responsibilities. So you have projects assigned to you, you're uh, managing programs, you're uh, carrying out tasks. That's an implementer level. And then a tech expert is where you have unique skills, solutions, and advice. For example, maybe your background is in marketing research. Maybe you're in analytics, or maybe you're uh, a, an expert in change management. Uh, these would be technical skills that um, are used at the tech expert partnering level. And then the fourth level within P1 mode is the educator. You're exploring ways of viewing issues. So trying to communicate to people the reports of your studies, um, <clears throat> analyses, uh, how are you going to convey that? How are you educating your audience or your stakeholders? So I will tell you partnering levels have their place in our jobs, 
but it is a bit dangerous to focus only there and you'll see why in a moment. I will guide you partnering mode is what we call P2. And this is where you provide deliverables, your client participates in uh, using them and the, the whole process. For example, you're conducting a workshop. So journey mapping, um, improvement workshops, innovation workshops, um, doing other things where you're facilitating um, them uh, in grasping uh, a concept and um, you're clarifying your uh, their thoughts, your thoughts and eliciting ideas from them. Another uh, level within this part, this uh, I will guide you mode is influencer. You're selling the ideas and broadening their perspectives. So you're influencing your internal uh, stakeholders to uh, maybe embrace an idea, get their buy-in, that's influencer level. And then the problem solver is where you're looking to identify root causes, evaluate solutions, and bring things uh, forward. So we have a comment here from Gatana in Lithuania. P1 is the most common as it does not require much cooperation and sharing responsibility. I think you're right. Um, so often we are quite busy with what's on our plate. Uh, the executives who um, have defined our job, have um, given us a lot, a lot of things that we need to do. And we never really move into P2 except for occasionally in a lot of the customer uh, loyalty, service, success, experience, employee uh, experience engagement, brand management, uh, marketing operations. We're so uh, um, overwhelmed uh, or uh, you know, our plate is full with just executing the P1 levels that we are rarely finding ourselves in the P2. Thank you for that, Atana. Uh, so let's take a look at P3. This is where we're creating together with our internal stakeholders or external stakeholders. We're jointly creating these deliverables and the other party is fi fully engaged. Now I, in this uh, slide, it talks about them as a client. They may be a co colleague in reality, or they may be a counterpart in another department or another division, another region. But uh, the word client is just a placeholder to represent all of those possibilities. Here we have the strategist level. This partnering level is where you're developing an overall direction of an engagement. So you're co-planning um, the workshop or you're co-creating a solution to a key issue that's uh, facing uh, your, your uh, collective organizations or that your client is uh, grappling with. You're being a strategist or a coach motivating their uh, their feedback, um, giving them motivation, uh, giving them feedback and advice and uh, continually improving together. Now that you're aware of these three partnering modes and the nine partnering levels, um, it may be easier to see how, if we are only working in the I will tell you mode, we're limiting a lot of the impact that we could be having on others. Um, here's an exercise you could do. Take a paper and sketch down the side, the first column, these nine partnering levels. And then put a name next to whoever, uh, put, put down the names of the people that you are uh, interacting with. Uh, what Put, put that, their name next to the uh, one of these nine levels. And then uh, why, answer in the third column, why are you in that partnering mode? And in the fourth column, what would make your uh, work together more successful in driving real change for customers and employees and partners, whoever your uh, core growth uh, stakeholders are? And um, I find that when you're thinking about what is and why and what should be, that opens the door for thinking about how to toggle. And the trick to it is really pretty simple. 
uh, we need to go back to the equation for trust in order to, to, uh, to grasp that. And here we see that concern for others is first and foremost, and that is tempered or diluted, uh, or let me, excuse me, uh, <laughs> your credibility, your reliability, and your confidability in others is diluted if, you're, if others see you as self-interested. But it's your credibility, reliability, and confidability are amplified if others see you as concerned for them, uh, understanding their situation, um, speaking their language, being cognizant of their challenges, uh, being a cheerleader for their success. So others in this equation really means the other party that you're interfacing with, the people that you are partnering with as colleagues, as uh, your audience for your reports, as people who need to make change happen as a result of the findings and, and whatever is in your job or in customer success, service, engagement, loyalty, employee experience and engagement, marketing ops, brand management, and so forth. Why is it so important to have internal branding and trust in these particular roles? Because Unbe you know, unlike popular opinions, uh, it's really vital that all of these roles take their strengths that they have for the external world and parlay those strengths to influencing the rest of the company because you're really dependent upon them to close the gap between what's promised and what's delivered to customers, to employees, and to partners in order to strengthen trust and relationships and the value that you can create and and uh, and enjoy in revenue profit growth uh, satisfaction reputation and so forth so this is really key it's really where it all starts you've got the basics down for your technical skills you probably have created cre uh, credibility uh, and reliability and confidability and concern for others and now it's time to use that in a constructive way across these three partnering modes and nine partnering levels. So the reliability that you have established in terms of how people feel about the actions that you take and the way that they experience, the, the, how they, uh, their experiences with you can be relied upon, that's really useful in the implementer and, and administrator levels of partnering. If we want to move into the educator levels uh, and tech expert, this is where credibility comes in. So for example, you may be using an acronym after your name to show that you have an MBA or that you're certified in this or that. Uh, you may have your diploma uh, or um, other things that help people understand your credibility. So this is how people feel about your words, skills, credentials, and how the way that they experience you, it's all believable to them. So that is the key to the P1 level. And we need to be aware that in order to go to the P2 and P3 levels, we need to show people more than reliability and credibility. In order to migrate successfully into the I will guide you mode, you need to really demonstrate to others your concern for them, how much you're focused on them instead of yourself. Some practical ways to do this would be uh, speaking more about the way that they're measured by, not just net promoter score and customer experience, employee experience and marketing lingo, but use the, the, the uh, terminology that they are evaluated by and in, in what you're showing them, explain how what you have is going to further their needs. This is how we um, migrate into facilitator, influencer, and problem solvers uh, partnering levels very successfully. And third, for P3, confidability in the trust equation is uh, an absolute must. 
This is how much people feel that they can confide in you and perceive you as discreet and empathetic. And um, it builds on your reliability and credibility and concern for others, this confidability. So as you uh, look at your list that you just created, where you are right now and where you think it would be more successful, um, think about how you could be using more concern for others and confidability as a visible manifestation of your work and your relationships with others so that people will begin to see you that way and invite you to be a coach, a strategist, a problem solver, an influencer, and a facilitator with them. Now, next week, we're going to talk more about this. We're going to be talking about the six trust files and really delve into those four criteria of the trust equation. So this week and next week, you'll be able to pull these things together and um, get a lot more done more quickly in the remote work that you have, as well as the precious moments you have face to face. So I wanted to share this uh, concept with you and let you know that there are a couple of ways that you can learn more about these techniques. One of the ways is through the Experience Value Exchange. We have uh, many tutorials on this and so many other things associated with driving consistency to intentions, respecting interdependencies, uh, generating a lifetime value mindset across the entire organization, meaning every group in your company, legal, purchasing, finance, uh, safety, operations, engineering, manufacturing, everyone having a customer lifetime mi value mindset, employee lifetime value mindset, and partner lifetime value mindset. How powerful would that be? Having aligned motivations. We're going to be talking about that in depth next week with these six uh, trust profiles. And then finally, where it manifests is customer-centered, employee-centered, partner-centered action, really driving improvements, innovations, uh, business models, policies, and your whole business moving forward with uh, the insights in mind uh, of those core stakeholders for that fuel your growth. So this is a, a, a neat uh, place that you can tap into in five minute bites, 10 minute bites, just kind of like you do with social media. You uh, go into the Clear Action Value Exchange and uh, pick up a very small tutorial or ask a question of other people, find other things that people have, uh, others have shared there. That's why we call it the Experience Value Exchange. This is one of those examples that's called the Solve Space. And you can see that there's four steps. It's designed to be done in 15, 20 minutes. And by the end, you have an action plan that you can work on uh, with, with your, yourself or with your colleagues uh, to test out that methodology. So in closing, I just wanna remind you that we have free playbooks and FAQs uh, in experience of employees, partners, and customers, as well as marketing operations, maturity, and we have a lot of courses at the clearaction.com site. If you want to learn more about this specific topic, it's in the customer-focused communication course, which is self-paced or live. And um, I have another class starting in about a half hour now, for, specifically for experts. If, you've, um, if you're a keynoter, a thought leader, uh, an author, or a judge, or an award winner, or a consultant, or uh, you've gotten your certification from whoever in uh, customer, employee, or partner experience. This class is for you, the one for experts that I have on Fridays. Um, it's also available in self-paced. So you can see we have a variety of things that um, may help you to take this uh, topic further. So I really welcome you to attend next week, the same time, same place, and appreciate you. Uh, Appreciate your comments today, as well as uh, continuing forward directly with me or uh, on this site as well. Thank you so much and have a great week.